Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're getting into our new user series again, and we wanted to cover something that we probably should have done at the beginning, hence making this like 1.1. So one of the things you have to do is first make changes to your devices in Microsoft Flight Sim. So what we mean by that is jumping into the menu and heading into the control options. By default, Microsoft Flight Sim tries to create a default profile for your device. And if I'm planning to use SPAD Next to bind things, I don't want anything in the SIM. Or I want some kind of a configuration that is a mix. So here you'll see under the throttle quadrant, I have a profile called blank SPAD. This is because I don't map anything for my Bravo inside of Microsoft Flight Sim. Of course, if you are on the default, you're going to find all kinds of things that are mapped to the Bravo. Now this will conflict with anything that you set up in SPAD.next. So what we want to do normally with something like the Bravo, where I'm going to wipe it clean, I simply come down to open Preset Manager and you can choose to make a new one or duplicate it. And if we make a new one, it's going to be completely blank. So here I might have it's bad. Next. And we click OK. And what you'll see is it generates a blank profile. Now this is perfect for the Bravo, so we can go ahead, hit apply and save. Of course, I've got blank for SPAD, default, and of course now SPAD next, but that's okay. That's what we're using. With the alpha flight controls example, you'll see that there are some things that I have mapped. Like in my case, cockpit camera views using the hat. Uh, I've left those here because with this, uh, this sends very fast and using the VJOY method was not as good. So I left the hat configured. Under flight controls, you're also going to find that I've left the elevator axis and the aileron axis inside of Microsoft Flight Sim and I don't map it inside of SPAD Next. And that's just because I found with the sensitivity curves, uh, these were a little bit easier to set up here. Um, again, to each their own, plenty of people set up in SPAD Next and use the curves there. So you get to do whatever you want. Since these are the standard events, and when it came to especially the POV events, it was a lot easier for me to just take the default configuration, which has a bunch of these things mapped to the hat switch and other elements. So your camera, your external views, those things. And so what we did there was we used the open preset manager and we used the duplicate function. And then we just went in and we deleted out all of the things that we didn't want because you can't delete from the default. So you have to either create a new blank one and add everything yourself, or you take the existing one, you duplicate it, then you go through and you delete and edit those items. Once you're done, you have to remember to hit apply and save. Otherwise it won't load this new one every time it boots up. So as you can see with my T320 pilot, I have cameras, but I also have the drone camera. And so to be able to control the drone camera and the primary flight controls, I found mapping it here is a little bit better. When you go outside, it automatically follows. I also map the Z to the nose wheel steering axis. That way I use this as a tiller when I'm using the PMDG or other yoke based uh, units. And it works well for steering axis on a joystick device that supports nose wheel steering uh, since I use my rudders for the rudder pedals for the rudder and you can lock that Z axis. Because again, I want to use the drone camera and the rudder axis. I kept the rudders mapped inside of Microsoft Flight Sim and I don't map them inside of SPAD Next. When you look at the TCQ engine, same thing. This is a completely blank for SPAD profile 
because I map everything inside of spad.next. So there you go. This is what you want to do before heading into spad.next and mapping things here. And as you can see with my TCA yoke, none of these axes have anything mapped to them because those axes were mapped to Microsoft Flight Sim. But all the buttons have been deleted from Microsoft Flight Sim because we've gone ahead and mapped it inside of here. Well, that's going to do it for this one here. If you made it this far, please go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.